Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. I'm pointing at you because I love you a whole long and it makes <laughs> mad. And uh, we're here to inspire you to make, <laughs> inspire you to read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. We're reading Matthew number lucky number 13. Matthew Sweet. lucky. Th are you suspicious? No. Superstitious, I mean. Yeah, no. I'm, a, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Mm -hmm. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. But you don't, you don't, black cats don't bother you, none of that. No, yeah. no. Dude, pff, me either. I was born on September the okay. 13th. What? I, yeah, and I turned 13 on Friday the 13th. Dude, yeah. no wonder you're single. <laughs> right? I know right. now, right? I thought it's because of the way you dress. No. Yeah, no. You were born on the 13th, and your 13th birthday was Friday the 13th. Yes. There ain't no woman going to marry that. No, right. That's Middle of the like... night, you turn into a clown, and all of a sudden, you're just hovering over the bed. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Lean over real quick. I just want to bless you. I bless you, my child. Okay, it's done. Curse is mm. broken. Damn, praise Broke God. that. Yes. You'll be married in a month. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> don't don't get no money from me though. I have none. <laughs> it's all been it's taken all been by spent Joey. by Joey. <laughs> Joey, let me ask you a question. Do you think it's fair that the daddy of the bride has to pay for the whole thing? I don't think it's. What fair. do you think, Uncle Phil? You have two daughters. Two daughters. daughters. <laughs> okay, he says he's not paying for anything. I think where, it should be like a that 50, tradition 50. that the dad of the daughter has to pay for the whole thing, and all the son-in-law has to do. It probably came from like the early seventies, when dogs. you know when dads were like not really involved in their son's life. Like, hey, you just go play football. Yeah, I, I'll I, see you on Friday. Research that, Phil. I want to know why in the American culture, me, yeah, had to pay and had to pay all that money because we had a girl no yeah i really think that's what it was like in the 70s dads didn't really raise their son they're like oh, i'll just see you on friday friday night lunch you better do good touchdown son right. and then and then it was like oh you're getting married yeah i don't know i've never <laughs> i never i didn't i didn't even know this was i didn't know you're engaged or you didn't have, i thought you're gay but i did i did <laughs> talk to robin because i've been mowed a lot <laughs> right. it just, my Venmo just kept leaving that's and leaving why, that's and leaving. Last week you were like, uh, yeah. I got to dig into I the dig, savings yeah. account. Right. It was getting ugly. Whew. Weddings cost a lot, <laughs> even the cheap ones. Mm -hmm. But we have some good news. Pull the picture. Oh, there they uh, are. Pull that yeah. up. There there they are. Joey's yeah. ditched us. Right. So if there is a problem this week with glitches, Uncle Phil's fault. Yeah. He's taking the fall for Joey. Thank you, you Uncle know, Phil. You know, you know what Uncle Phil did? He's a sacrificial He's lamb. He's a sacrificial <laughs> lamb. Because he told Joey, because he runs the place here, right? Yeah, he does. Me and you have nothing to do with this church anymore. <laughs> no, it's Phil Phil's runs the whole thing. We just show up. Yeah. And Phil. He even has a special parking spot now. And Phil told Joey. He said, Joey, he said, uh, I know you're getting married, son. Yeah. But you're not getting off the Bible reading show. No. You're going you're gonna to miss your honeymoon because you will film the Bible reading. But no, you know what he did? Sacrificial lamb, Phil. Yeah. Go ahead, Joey. I got your back. Miss Robin could take a few notes from Phil. You know, go ahead, Joey. I got your back. And then Joey leaves and goes on a honeymoon. And you know who set everything up in here? You. You yeah. know why? Sacrificial lamb, Phil, yeah. ain't got a clue what to do. That's all right. He's like, you go ahead, Joey. I got it all. Yeah. He can't set up a camera. <laughs> he can't run anything other than a Mac. So he has no clue what to do. Yeah. And, uh, no, so we had to teach we, we you. We I know nothing. It's all right. You had to teach him, but I, I think he's been doing pretty good. All right, so I, he it looks like Phil's got an answer on where the wedding. Okay, yeah, came give it from. to me. What? What? Why? Why? Okay, so he sent it to me. Dude, technology. Why do men? Did he, did he text it to you or the, airdrop the it? To daddy, him? he he he, <laughs> he texted. Uh, I thought he could airdrop because hundreds of years ago. Here's the question: the origin of the bride's family paying for the wedding. Okay, all right. And let me just say, yeah, we've been taking care of Milo all week. Yes, we have. I have my teeth, right? But if you would like to help out, people, uh huh. Because I've got two more daughters. <laughs> right. You can Venmo me and then tell them what happened. At the end of the wedding with one of your daughters. Oh, my other daughter catches the bouquet. Yeah. You know what I But it was like an act of God that she caught it because Definite Sophia threw it way over up, her head. But then like the, the speaker on the roof mm -hmm. caught it and like dropped it right into Lucy's hands. And you know what I told her, Lucy? Uh, you ain't getting married for at least seven years. <laughs> I ain't got no more money. You know what she told me? Listen, are you ready? Are All right, you, what listen, everybody out there. 
just sit back a minute. Do you know what my third daughter told me? What did she say? Daddy, I'm getting married at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even Maybe. go to Disney World. You can't just sell. You need to sell both your kidneys. To Much do that. less a wedding at Disney. She goes, no, my wedding will be at Disney World. I said, honey, your daddy cannot afford a princess <laughs> wedding because of any of my children yeah. are a princess. Right. It's Princess Lucy. Yeah, right. She is a princess through and through, uh-huh. wants to work at Disney World, wants to be a princess at Disney yeah, World. Yeah, yeah, Probably won't make it because she's tatted up and can't have a dirty little princess. No. But she's always wanted to be. So now she's going to get married. Wow. And I said, honey, I just don't have the, the funds probably, but we'll work on it. You know yeah. what she said? Get ready. This show, the kind of girl this is, daddy, don't worry. I have a job and I'll pay for it. Aw. And Lucy. Right. Little Lucy. So I'm sure in the next month or two. Yeah. Once <laughs> somebody get Yeah, she'll get married. She's got a great job. Right. She has good teeth. Right. She she has inroads to free tattoos. Whoa. Now what boy would not want a wife that could get an inroad to free tattoos? Right. She's got a lot going for her, you know. That's awesome. Good teeth. Yeah. She's got a nursing degree. Yes. She works at one of the biggest hospitals in Atlanta. Sugar mama. Sugar mama. She loves expensive shoes. <laughs> like, how much money do you have, hun? <coughs> None. Right. Where's all your money? It's on her feet. She loves <laughs> shoes. All right. So here's the answer. All okay, right? let's hear it. Why does the bride's family pay for the wedding? Because, uh, makes me wonder, okay. hundreds of years ago. Like the 70s? Women were considered chattel. What does that mean? Look that up. I have no clue. That's It's C-H-A-T-T-E-L. And I pride myself that I'm pretty good with the English language. E-L or A-L? Uh, E-L. Chattel. Chattel. It, it Maybe chattel. I don't know. I, I've never. Ch- chattel is a tangible, personal property that is movable between locations so like a car or so so my daughter's like a car okay so let's reread it because hundreds of years ago women were considered personal property like a car and the bride's family used to have to pay off the groom's family in form of a dowry to take their daughter off their hands oh wow this needs to change (laughs) i don't know who made this up yeah, that's what idiot said. Hey, in our progressive culture, I'm surprised we're still. I'm doing surprised this. women even let us do it. Why isn't CNN and MSNBC upset about this? I am proposing right now a right. walkout. Yeah, of all dads uh, all of dads. daughters, yeah, who are sick of their children being called personal property, right? And that my daughter's like a personal property given to you as a dowry to take her off my hands. No, I want you to pay for the wedding, right? I'm gonna let that brew a minute. You feel it, Phil? Because you got two da- you got two daughters. You better be on board. I'm on board. Did, I did not know that. <laughs> Why hasn't some feminist picked this up? I don't know. And said we are not personal property of of this tyranny. So chattel or chattel. What? How do you pronounce it on there? Chattel or chattel? Let's see. Uh, that's a new word for me. I'm gonna us. put that up in my brain. Chattel. I, I just. You know what I want to do? Uh, uh, call Robin. Let's tell her she's personal property and see how well it goes. I think Miss Robin will let us know how women feel. She's brief. She might not answer, though. She's out. Hello. Well, hey, my sweet bride. How are you? Um, are you on my, I'm out in the parking lot. <laughs> are you calling me from You're your not office? doing laundry? You're not doing laundry? I'm not doing laundry. I'm visiting with our guests who are from out of town, from California. I just came to visit us and come to the wedding. So good. All right. In other words, don't do anything. So. No, no. Listen to me. We we really need you just for like two minutes. That's it. Two minutes. And two she, minutes. and and Air? your your friend. No, you can do on the phone. Your friend may can okay. help. Okay. Okay. So I've I'm kind of been whining yeah. that the daddy and the mama, the bride, have to pay for the whole thing. Well, and I mean, if well, I'm not done talking concern, yet. I know, but the mom doesn't even get to dance with I know, the bride or I know, the groom. But you do you not didn't... know what we have found out here. We have got information that has been shocking okay. because I said to Ryan, I don't know where this tradition started that Daddy and Mama, the bride, got to pay for the whole thing. Right. I think that right. I think the boy who wants my daughter's hand should pony up some money. Right. So that's how it was in the Old Testament. Yes, but wait, it gets better. 
Uncle Phil Googles why does the bride have mm-hmm. parents have to pay for it? And and mm-hmm. you, I, oh, I hung up on her. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me. Call. I was trying to get to to the to the thing. So let me get her back, and then I'll get her to the. It's chattel. Chattel. You're gonna lose me because I'm nope. getting close to my car. No, nope, I'm, I'm not. Do car. not get in your car, woman. Stay there. This is quick. Listen. Okay. So we okay. Googled why do men have, of the bride have to pay? Listen to what it said. Because hundreds of years, hundreds of years ago, women uh-huh. women were considered chattel. I'm and, sure cattle or chattel. Chattel, which means personal property. So girls were considered personal property like a car or mm-hmm. a camel, and the mm-hmm. family used to have to pay the groom's family in the form of a dowry to take their daughters off their hand. So we, me and Ryan are like, if feminists knew that the reason the parent is paying is because their daughter is like a form of personal property, and we're having to pay a guy to take her off our hands, we think that makes women look rather lowly. And we're both doing a walkout that we, the bride's family shouldn't have to pay anymore. Because we don't think women are chattel or personal property. No. So who should pay? The guy that wants the daughter. Pony up, get a job. Pay for the whole thing. We want to get a national a we want to get a national movement where the guy pays for the whole thing. Although I have that, a thought. I don't I don't think that'll work. Guys most guys don't understand the value of the dollar that's spent on the event. So they would probably never even ask to propose because they're like, yeah, she's too expensive. Yeah. Or they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't. Or they, or she's saying they would propose, but they would just go down to the courthouse. Yes, exactly. The, the wedding venue event ceremony would be, I don't, I just don't the think back porch, much. probably. Yeah. yeah. It, it would be the yeah, back yeah, yeah. porch, and Granny would be making cornbread. <laughs> right. Yes. Because guys, what I mean. so basically, what you're saying is the reason the bride's parents pay for it all is because men are cheapskate. Mm. I didn't say it. <laughs> but you feel it in your heart. <laughs> it, I think you said it. No, you just said the reason that wouldn't I work is men it. are cheap. I didn't say that. No, I didn't. Okay, well, I must have misunderstood you then. Well, no, we're trying to start a movement, though. and I can't believe you didn't jump in the movement because your bank account stayed empty for six months. It is still empty. I'm still paying for the bride's wedding. I know. Yeah. I know because one of the dresses was on my credit card. Exactly, but I just took one back today. So Jesus loves <laughs> you. Jesus and he loves lo- you. No, I don't know about that, but he loves you. That you're ta- I love that. She's taking stuff back. That's wonderful. Thank you, honey. I love you. I'm taking you out for pizza tonight. Um, We'll see about that. I love you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. So she basically (laughs) said the reason. It sounds to me like you're already kicked out of the tent. I mean, it just, it came across. She's right. Yeah. The reason the bride pays is men would never propose. It's too expensive. Right. That's true. And we would never have a ceremony or cake. We don't care. We don't care. We probably wouldn't even have clothes on. We're like, we're getting married. It's cheap. Yeah, right. So I think that's right. Maybe it's not that girls are personal property. Maybe it's because dudes are just cheapskates. I think that's what it is. I think it is, too, because I'm a dude. Right. You're a dude. Yeah. I even say, let's just do it cheap. Somebody was trying, a lady, she was trying to talk to me about, oh, when you get married, you need to do this, this. And I'm thinking, that's a nice thought. I don't care. Yeah. So I guess I guess she's right. So let's jump in. I don't. The whole week's just messed me up since Joey's not here, and I'm I'm on the wedding blues. <laughs> here we go though. It's good, man. It's super super uh, interesting. Yes. What it says about the heart and okay. talking about the heart, but it says this. Listen to the explanation. Verse eighteen of Matthew thirteen. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the word, the message of the, about the kingdom, and don't understand it. And the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their heart. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times 
as much has been planted. We've been talking about the word on yes. the heart right. that uh, God plants his word in your heart. And I ask you to mm -hmm. define the word heart. So give me your definition of heart, and then I'll give you what I think the heart is. When I say to Ryan, you need to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Or, hey, don't you know that Jesus can change your heart? Mm -hmm. Or, hey, and then we come to this, and it's like, oh, my gosh, the heart can be hard. The word wants to come to your heart. Define heart for me from your perspective, then I'll give you what I think. I think it's the motive, the reason why you do stuff, the, okay. uh, what what propels you to do an action or say something or or what causes you to think things. That so the, the heart motive. is the motive. Yeah. Okay, good. I like that. Not against it. Can I give you my thought? Come on. All right. Trying to understand if we're not talking about the heart. Yeah, yeah. But we say the word heart, and we might use the term like the the real you or the inner you or the driving force, right? Mm -hmm. The motivation, the right. motive you. I want to give you a thought. Mm -hmm. Ponder it, and I want you to give me what you think about it. All right. So let, let's define the heart based on this parable. Here's what Jesus starts, and I'll read it slow. And I'll just pull out my thought. Listen to the explanation of the parable, verse 18, about the farmer. The seed fell on the footpath, represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand, so that's the mind, mm -hmm. and the evil one comes and takes it out of their heart. Yep. He comes into the next one. The seed is a rocky soil, those who hear the message and receive it, but don't have deep roots. They fall away because of problems or they're persecuted, which is the mind and uh, understanding it, not at the root. Right. The worries of life choke it out. It doesn't make it. I think that the heart is not one single thing, but a combination okay. that makes up the whole. All right. Such as um, the cake, the mm -hmm. wedding cake. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of ingredients, flour, sugar, uh, buttercream, that make the cake. Don't right? forget the eggs. And the eggs that make the cake, right? right? I think the heart is not a single thing. I think the heart is the combination of things in your life. First off, the ear. Because the ear has to hear, mm -hmm. then the mind has to understand it, right. and then when the mind understands it, it produces actions in the body, right. and the hearing and the mind and the actions are how we would define the heart. Mm. And so when Jesus says, you serve me with your mouth, right. but your heart is far from me, yeah, right. meaning they weren't hearing, mm -hmm. they weren't understanding, and it wasn't producing the right kind of fruit. Yeah. And even when they produced the fruit uh -huh. and they did right things, he said, well, you're doing all these right things, but you still have an evil heart because you're not hearing right. And then we say, well, I'm, I'm hearing right, but your mind's not right. Mm -hmm. So if your mind's not right and darkened, then your heart is not right. So I think all three, the hearing, the understanding, and the doing – would be the ingredients of what it is to have a good heart. Yeah. You hear, you do, and you understand. Right. Or you hear, understand, and do. And right. when you hear the word, you understand the word, and you do the word, you produce a good heart. The heart is that all together makes up the heart. If we pull one of those ingredients out, yeah. the heart is not good. Right. If we take the hearing away of the word, it's not good. If I take the understanding away, I just fall off the wagon. Yeah. If I take the doing away, I'm a doer but not I'm a hear you know, but I don't do it. I hear yeah. it but I don't do it. Right. I'm sickly. I'm not I'm not producing. So I think anytime a Christian talks about the heart, mm -hmm. it's not just acknowledging okay, I believe in Jesus, oh, good, he's changed your heart. Mm -hmm. Or Jesus, come into my heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we even kind of have that romantic idea that Jesus goes down our mouth, yeah, right. kind of goes down into our stomach and does something in this area. Yeah. I don't know what he does, but we'll even say he lives in you, he breathes in you. Mm -hmm. And and I think when you really come, that when we say Jesus, come into my heart, uh, and be Lord of my life, we're saying, let my hearing right. be your word. Right. Let my mind understand your word. Yes. And let my body produce the fruit of your word. And when I hear it and understand it and produce the fruit of your word, my heart has been renewed 
and we would be why we could say we're born again. Right. And it's why Jesus could look at a bunch of religious people and go, you're just your son of the <laughs> devil. Well, well, wait a minute. I go to the temple. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I do all these good things. Yeah, but you don't hear. He even says that in this parable. He says their hearing is hard. They, they see, but they don't see. They yeah. hear, but they don't hear. And I think that's what the heart is. I think it's a combination of hearing, understanding, and doing. It's good. And that's what makes your heart. And we can judge all of those uh, as if what you said, we can know a tree by the fruit. Right. So I can know Ryan Holdeman's fruit by do you hear? Do you understand what you hear? And do you do what you hear? Yes. And if so, you're a good tree that produces good fruit. Amen. That's my thought on the heart. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.